My goodness. Come over here and say hello. Yes, hi. Yes, hi. Hi. Whoa. All right. Hello. Hello. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Oh, yes. Good boy. Teddy bear is so... So, so excited today to see you. He's so excited to see you. Benji is too. He's just not as loud. How are you? As am I. As am I. Oh, there you go. I got, I learned a lesson. You got to put little treats next to the desk so that when they bark too, too much, they get a little treat to stop. <laughs> That's probably rewarding bad behavior, but oh well. Um, Anyway, hi everyone. Good morning. Yes, you say good morning. Good job, Teddy Bear. Um, <clears throat> it's Rita. Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue and Cricket Chat. Good morning. Hello, uh, Guadalupe. Hi, Aledra. Hi, Diana. Oh, Diane and Nikki. Hello, everyone. Um, it's Wednesday. Hi, Wendy and Penny. Hi, Penny. How are you? Thank you for sharing. Um, uh, so today, today we're doing something uh, that is sort of near and dear to my heart, which is coffee. I'm going to share later on. I'm going to share this um, really wonderful post that I made in honor of not just my dad, but um, my godparents, who were also my dad's, my dad's uh, sister, my aunt and uncle, Anna and Sal. Now, these three people were like, I would call the original coffee clutch. Um, and whenever they got together, they drank coffee and chit-chatted and never mean it was just like you know they just like to visit visiting was a big thing for my um my family that generation of my family remember visiting when people would just come over and you'd have like a little something that you saved and um you know either you made it or you had it at home and and you'd put on a pot of coffee and you just chat and catch up so um this project is sort of a uh is it's sort of a homage to those days and to my father it being father's day weekend and also to my aunt and uncle who were they were just inseparable yeah i miss those days of just having somebody come by so most of the time it was unannounced right or they might tell you on the phone i'm heading up that way that's what my dad would say heading up that way you can be home and uh yeah and then you know just come in and have a coffee even on a hot day have a coffee I always had coffee for him and um and then he would he would visit with me and my aunt and uncle who lived in Peabody uh, not too far from here he'd go on over there mostly on a Sunday he would do this because then afterwards he would go call the numbers at bingo he was uh Knights of Columbus uh past grand night and he would always go on a Sunday to call the bingo on Sunday so he would come and visit without fail at least twice a month on a Sunday so um this is sort of for him now this was such an easy project and um I wanted to point out to you this is uh, it's part of a bundle you don't have to buy the whole bundle and in fact probably not one of these that I would buy the whole bundle because the other two pieces although cute um are a little bit I don't know maybe not they just weren't for me. So you can now at 3D SVG, you can now buy these things, um, these individually. And that's what, um, no, that's not what I did. I did for something else, but this is a vintage coffee pot. It's $3 and 29 cents. And if you are placing an order for that, I did post a link. They also have a code, um, because they just relaunched their site. 
And if you use the code GRAND, you'll get 25% off of your entire purchase. So this is DreamingTree3DSVG.com. And I want to show you how we put this together. Um, and after I just say, hi, 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 everybody. I know I, I talk too much. I talk too much. Um, anyway. I do that with projects, so like certain projects you just sort of have in your mind the person that, you know, you're making it for, and it just sort of grows from there. Um, okay, Teddy. So this one here... Um, this one here is, uh, as I said, pretty big. It's a big file, but it's not a difficult file. So it does take up quite a bit of paper um, when you're making it at this size. And I'm just going to show you, this is what it actually looks like. It's pretty big. It's hard to get into the camera. And it does open. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, you guys. Oh, yeah, they're really barky today. You know, their dog walker hasn't come in a couple of days, and I think they get antsy. Uh, my friend who likes to walk, him, <laughs> walk them has been working in Brockton this week. Okay, so um, here is what it looks like inside. It's a great little package, and it's like triple, um, it's triple layered for the bottom so if you wanted to you could put um like maybe a pound of coffee in there or even one of your your mugs or something like that so it's kind of a gift box but it's also kind of a centerpiece item this one i did in like blues with uh in in here it's red but i did blue so um there's my blue daisies and I matched the daisies with this and then I also put together two more and I'm going to show you how to put them together. We're not going to cut it today because it does um, require a lot of, let me just show you, um, so if we did it on the mat, uh, I think it's like 10 nine mats you see so there's uh for the base of it there's one two three four five you need five 12 by 12 pieces of paper and then two pieces matching of your pattern so um this is a big file but it's not difficult to put together when you buy something from any outside designer you have to upload the images um from from where you purchased it or where you actually put it when you purchased it so if you went to 3dsvg.com and you purchased something you would go let's see if i can go into my account and just show you i tell you these this stuff because I think a lot of people are like, yeah, now what do I do with it? So I'm sorry if this is repetitive, but for the person that hasn't done this in a while. So these are all the uh, files that I purchased from uh, these guys over the years. There's a lot of them. Um, they have wonderful free I images up here and they put that up here on the on the navigation bar but so once you get to um something so this is an it, it, it was free but this is one that i want to download um you go to your downloadable products and then you just click on download which is over here Okay, and when you do that, you'll notice now for me, I have a uh, Macintosh and the downloads show here. And then I can go, if I want, I can go to this file finder and I can see under downloads, see this is all my downloads. There it is, the pumpkin favor bag, 3dsvg.com. That's the one we just downloaded. Now, um, usually every file that these folks do uh, comes with a PDF and this one's no different. So here's a PDF of that favor bag. Um, 
Yes, I could make him Frank. Frank colored. Frank doesn't have little, uh, these little, the M head. That's what I call these kinds of uh, ginger cats, M heads, because they have an M on their forehead. So, um, but yes, I could make this black with white. I could make it Frank. It was so cute. I hadn't thought of that. But anyway, so it comes with a, a PDF. And usually with the PDF, it will tell you right here, supplies needed. And it tells you all the paper you you need. So in this case, I need two sheets of butterscotch cardstock and the colors they use match, I believe, AC cards, AC cardstock, American craft cardstock colors. And then it also tell you things you also need such as glue. Or if you need things like a finial or a bling or something like that, it would tell you that. So this isn't what you're going to bring into Design Space, but it does show you exactly how many files are coming with that download. So in this case, we're going to have to upload one, two, three, four, five pieces, okay? And we have to do that separately. So let's just go over here and... Um, I'm not going to do the the coffee pot, but um, I'll do the pumpkin one so you can understand what I'm talking about. So start with a clean uh, canvas and upload, and then you would go upload image, browse, and you go to that file that you um, were just at that file. Of course, my computer is slow, but I'm going to downloads and then I will find my pumpkin favor bag. And uh, usually in a folder called SVG, there are all of our pieces. So you're going to select each one and open it. You can also drag and drop if you like doing that. I don't, so I don't do it that often, but you basically are going to upload all of these pieces for this project. Um, I tend to take my PDF, which I always print out. Um, I take, I take my PDF and I, when I'm uploading a project from these guys, because there are so many pieces, I use the PDF to, to know where I've been in the upload process. So, so sometimes you forget one of the sheets and then when you go to put one of the SVGs and when you go to put it together, you're like, ah, I, I, I'm missing something. So here are the five that we're going to do, pretend to do, and to make our kitty box. So we have to pull them all in to the same canvas. Um, and so let's see, let's see. It takes a, a second or two because it's my computer. Uh, <laughs> and of course, of course it does. So um, it takes a second or two, but you're going to press that upload and insert button. And here are the five pieces. So now you have the completed file into the canvas. You do need to save it. Um, just uploading it is not going to save it as a project. It's really important to know that since um, there are, there you know, the, a lot of times people don't understand it's kind of a two-step process. Process, okay. So, and with all of these files that come in from outside designers where they have uh, replaced score lines. So in this case, see all these dashed cut lines? These are score lines or how they do score lines when they're an outside designer. So um, the way this works is you do have to attach them. So here I am attaching. It's only one piece on this case, but these are all set. And then I will save this as, oh, I don't know, 3D SVG. I always save it 3D SVG. Uh, pumpkin bag, pumpkin kitty bag, really, kitty. Um, and then I choose my collection. So I'm going to choose bags and boxes, and I always choose dreaming tree, and that's it. So I hope you're using these collections because they're really useful, um, and then I save.
So um, next time I want to find this file, I don't have to go into my projects and scroll and scroll and scroll um, through all of my 2,000 projects. Um, speaking of which, uh, so I have over 2,000 projects. These are all my projects. And before I, could, before I did collections, I could couldn't find certain things, but now I can go over here and choose, say, Dreaming Tree, and here are all my Dreaming Tree files. There's a lot of them, 140 of them to be exact, and I can um, you just choose them, and rather than have to recreate them, because these are a little bit more uh, work to recreate if you happen to lose the file. Okay, so that is all that. And so we're not going to really talk too much about the, um, the cutting, uh, and, and the up, uploading of this, uh, project, but it is quite big and it does take a lot. So save this. I don't know why I keep saying that, but, um, we are going to spend some time putting it together though, because actually I'm going to put it together a little bit different than Leo. Leo is the guy that runs Dreaming Tree and um, he has a couple of people that work with him um, and he always does these wonderful tutorials where he goes through very detailed about how to put these things together and usually I follow his his uh, his instructions to the letter. But in this case, I did it slightly different than he did. So I wanted to show you how I did it. Now I'm going to bring you down here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So again, this is a 3D uh, pot and it has a cute little spout and it has a handle and then it opens at the bottom like this. And um, you can embellish it any way you like. There's all kinds of embellishments, including I haven't yet figured out what I'm going to do here for the top. It needs a little finial, so I was going to go look for maybe um, like a, a pearl or something, you know, a plastic you know, sewing pearl or something. Or he put um, a little uh, styrofoam ball on there. But um, so you can look and see what else what else you might want to do with this. But it's just a really cute, vintage-y looking um, box. Now, when he put it together, there's, there's three pieces. There's the bottom, this is the bottom piece. And this is the main piece, right? So when he put this together, he didn't attach the spout or the handle until afterwards. But for me, I just thought it was an awful hard, it was awful hard to do it the way that he suggested, which was you were supposed to close it and then attach the, the spout and the handle. <laughs> All right, you stop, stop, stop. So instead I attached it before I enclosed it and I wanted to show you that. So there is the base, the two pieces that are the base and here's the top. So luckily I cut this out three times because I have three people I wanna give it to. And um, so we can start as if from scratch. So let's first have a look at all um, it is very tall. Let me just check. I think it's over, yeah, it's about 12 inches. So it's over a foot tall. This is not a small project. Um, if you wanted to do it on the Joy, you would have to minimize it or miniaturize it quite a bit so um, for it to fit. All right, teddy bear. So here are all of our pieces cut out and we're just going to sort of sort things up. These are, um, this is going to my friend who runs the community farm. So I picked things because she works with me on the butterflies. I picked them because it had, this has like broccoli and zucchini and butterflies and stuff. So I picked this particular uh, paper. This paper, by the way, came from uh, Park Lane. I forgot what it was called, like a 
in the in the garden park lane i think it was called in the garden it was really cute and i picked it up for a song at um at joanne so i'm going to put those all aside just wrote first and then here are flowers which kind of like take a back seat on this project um but we'll still put them together and they actually have these little uh leaves here as well there are some gold pieces and that's it then you just have the big big pieces here so let us put this together let's start with scoring or folding it all of the dash cut lines for these and there are quite a few make sure you get them all it's important so here's the base piece the main piece let me find the second piece okay here's the second piece of the main and we're gonna fold here be careful here because there is a slit that's for the spout all right, and so we're folding, and I always fold the other way. This, by the way, this uh, paper that I'm using is, uh, the, the, the solid color is Cricut, and I like it. I like it. I like the way that it is. So um, might want to consider that if you can't find the color you're looking for with Cricut. And I'm actually looking at this and, you know, <laughs> this one, it's slightly off because it was sitting in the sun, which is a huge no-no. So I apologize for that. So we're going to take these two pieces once we've fold the, folded them up. And we are then going to put glue along this tab like that now if you ever get mixed up and you think how do these go together remember so the tab is going to be connecting to a flat cut never are you going to be doing tab on tab um that was something i messed up when i first started doing so i thought it's worth mentioning um to you so now again, we're not gonna close this up because we wanna put the things, uh, the spout and the handle on. So let's decorate this piece. We need all of these, all of these big pieces. We've got this one. This one is specially cut out to accommodate for, um, for, that, for the spout, you see? All right. So on this, so these two work with the spout like this. And then you'll see that two have cutouts that the green is going to show through so that um, you can put your flowers here. Now, this is up to you how you want to do it. But I put it so that the flowers were on either side of the spout. But you don't have to do it that way. You could do it this way if you wanted to. But I think it looks kind of better that way because when you're looking at it straight on you see the flowers so we're just going to glue all these pieces on here just like that i won't um show you i'm going to show you sort of uh well i don't know what i'm going to do <laughs> i don't know what i'm going to do what i will tell you is that each of these pieces has a little cutout right here at the bottom um, and that's just for placement, which is kind of nice. So you just put the placement here, or you can follow along here and make sure when you place these pieces that, um, you leave this slit open. You see that I'm leaving it open and it also lines up here with that cutout. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. See that? Same thing on the other side. Here, this one's gonna come out real cute. This one here, the other green one I did, this is Echo Park paper. I can give you uh, where it came from uh, afterwards. So we're just going to glue. I have the ultra fine tip on my glue, which I really don't need for this project. And it makes it a little bit harder because it really does come out ultra fine. Um, but we'll just 
persevere because that's what we are. We persevere. So here we go. We have all, most all of these pieces on. You'll see these, these two slits here are for the handle. So now you guys will be a little better about putting this together than I because you're not trying to beat the clock here. So and that's the thing about Leo when he puts these together. He takes his time and talks about all kinds of stuff with glue and stuff. But sometimes uh, it's just a little too long than longer, too long for me to watch. So I um, I don't know. Maybe it's my ADD or something. So okay. So here's the whole piece like that. All right. Put it aside just briefly and find the piece that has the spout and that looks like this kind of a triangle it has two uh two tabs one on either side because it's going to slip into these holes here um so that's what we're going to do now i would rather um kind of dress it up before I put it together. It's kind of how I like to do things. We're also going to be doing the handles. So what we're going to do is find all of these triangles. Um, some of the triangles, there are actually two triangles that fit the spout and the rest are for the top and they are slightly different. So these two are the actual for the spout and they're slightly different than these. So let's put those aside and put these on. And these will go on like this and almost touching this, this point right there, okay? Almost touching this sort of point. So let's go ahead and glue those pieces in. We're leaving this spot open uh, because there's actually a piece of gold. Did I put this on wrong? I did. Duh. <laughs> okay, I did put it on wrong. So we leave the edges open because we're going to put a piece of gold uh, cardstock there. Shimmer, no, mirror cardstock that we'll do there. And there. Okay, and then we can find this gold piece. It has a little cut in there that's for the dashed cut lines and we can attach it here. Okay, oops. Try to keep uh, the glue off the gold shimmer stuff or the gold mirror stuff because it, it tends to um, stain it. And I always get it on there. Okay, so now we're going back to the main piece. And this is where the spout is going to go. And just kind of just show you where it's going to go. It goes in this way and like this. Okay, but we have to secure it. So let's flip it over. And we're going to take this tab right here. And really, we're going to really put a lot of glue on there. Um, just because this is a piece that's going to be sticking out. And we're going to fold it in towards the back like this. You can use your flat surface to do this, at least on the first side, okay? And then, if you need to look, you can look, but you're going to pop in the second tab like this. Now, you can't put this down because you're... you're um, your spout is sticking out now, but you were just gonna do the same thing and glue, get some really, a lot of glue here and fold it into the back. Now, Leo does this differently. He, um, you can actually do this. Leo uh, puts, puts it on afterwards, but he's using like a flashlight. And I'm like, I don't wanna use a flashlight and, and uh, tell people to do that. And then you're reaching inside. So this was my way of doing it. And with apologies to Leo, but I just didn't think that that made a lot of sense to do it after you assembled. 
this. It does require you to be diligent about the glue though. And that's a little more glue than I normally use, but it is necessary for this. And you do have to hold it to make sure that it sticks real, real well. Okay. The next piece is the handle. And this is actually, there's two pieces of the handle so that it makes the handle, um, handleable, handleable. And where is my second piece? Oh, good gravy. I don't see it. So weird, 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 weird. Isn't that always the case? Okay, so the two handles you're going to glue together and you'll see on each end of the handles there are these tabs and one of the tabs says T, I think. Is that a T? Yeah, there's a T there. You can see that. That just means, I believe it means top. Um, and we're going to then take our pieces of uh, cardstock and the handles are a little different. So um, we're going to put the, the cardstock on there, the panel for that cardstock. I wonder where my other handle went weird. Uh, let me just double check before I put it on without it. It's just a, um, it's just a piece to, to kind of give it some, some, uh, so we'll pretend like we did it and that I cut it out correctly and that, um, that I had the two, the two pieces put together to sort of make the handle strong. And then here are the panels on either end. We're not putting glue on this end just yet. And we will take um, these two pieces of also the mirror card stock in gold, which I got at Michael's. By the way, Michael's is having a sale. And of course I placed my order um, on paper is sale on paper and uh let's see they have one of those buy one get two free things and uh they also have their eight and a half by 11 inch paper on sale as well so might want to pop in there to pick some up if you plan on doing a lot of cardstock projects okay so normally there'd be two tabs on this but we're going to pretend that they're there and I think I might have put it in wrong yeah I did so we're going to put it in like this flip it over and you'd butterfly the two pieces if you had them but I don't so I'm just going to glue this part to the interior of my of my pot. See that? And so you know what I mean about butterflying? So you just pull these through and then glue one to this side, one to that side, right? But we don't have that, so we are pretending. Okay, so now you can actually glue this together, just like this. And we're going to um, glue, right here along this tab, and make sure that you get as close to the edge as you can when you're putting this together. And you can kind of reach your hand in there to sort of uh, make sure that it's really caught very well. And it is, there is, the the base of the project well i don't want to say base actually the majority of the project will do the base so that it can keep its shape it's okay that it's a little wobbly but that's the the main piece and then as far as the base is concerned it consists of four pieces 
First, you have these, which are just for the bottom of the pot, um, just to give it some strength. You can actually just glue them together if you want. Right now, it doesn't really matter um, how you go about this, okay? So these are the, the base pieces. And then the other two pieces that you have are these. So we're gonna fold everything. And you notice that one part of this has the uh, hexagon, hexagon on there, and the other one does not. That's just part of the base. So fold at all of those cut lines. Whoop, I'm rushing, sorry. Um, and here we are, okay? So then remember, this is the bottom of the, um, the bottom of the base. And so these pieces have to be facing this way. You see that? And so I'm going to glue the tab here and then we'll have one big piece and I'll show you how to assemble it from there. Let's just get some glue on there. No panels go on this part, okay? Just uh, just plain because it's going to go inside of the actual big part, all right? Then once you get that done, one tab like this, then you can fold the other tab in. And I do this on a flat surface because I want the shape to be exact and um, it's important for your final design to have it that way, okay? So once you have those two tabs and they're stuck really, well, at least they're stuck good because sometimes if you don't wait long enough, um, it will open up. You're going to sort of, sort of bend them all. And this, at this point, this is upside down, but there's your base and you're going to fold in all of these tabs, just like this, okay? And then we're going to bring this one down and attach it. But we have to be really good about attaching it with the right glue, like, you know, perfectly, because we do want it to fit to the back. So I just put a lot of glue here. You can come back. Um, I don't, I, I don't advocate using too much glue, but it has to be strategically placed. And sometimes you have to go back and add more and that's okay. Um, you can do that, but see how I am actually making sure that these sides are all matched up. No overlap. Now, if you want, you can turn it over and sort of use something, whatever you have around. Um, I always use my glue bottle and just make sure that those tabs are on there really good and that there are no gaps. Like sometimes if you put it too far out, then you'll see like a gap um, or sometimes you'll see an overlap. So don't do that make it as straight as possible and then here are our bottom pieces that we're putting on there just for strength um of the box just for strength <laughs> i love 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 that ultra fine tip but when i need to put together 3d things i really need to have my regular tip because it does not come out um the as well as i want it to okay so there's the base and it's really nice and sturdy so as i mentioned you know if you wanted to put uh a coffee mug in here you could it would fit um or a bag of beans or ground coffee or you don't have to put anything in you can just leave it as a centerpiece item and then you take your your main piece and it just slides right on there see that slides right on there isn't that beautiful believe it or not we're almost done okay and so we have the base we have the main piece the spout and handle so all that's left is the top piece and the flowers 
So um, let's do the top piece. So the top piece consists of this and this. And we are also going to be using these triangles, the leftover triangles, and this piece of gold uh, cardstock, okay? So we're gonna do what we always do, fold these all at the dashed score lines like this, see that? We're not gonna put this together right away because I wanna show you a little trick. Now this piece is very interesting and it gave me pause. So <laughs> I figured I would, I would do some, um, some discussion around this. This piece is actually going to form the lip of the, of the um, base, like the coffee pot top. This part will not come off Okay, it won't come off, um, but it's going to require a little tiny bit of maneuvering. So the way that you are going to fold it is that the inside pieces, actually I did it wrong. The outside pieces are going to face up like this, and the inside pieces are going to face down like this. We'll talk about it in a sec. So let's take these um these triangles and put them on to our coffee pot lid. Who else had these uh, Pyrex? I think they were Pyrex. Um, lid, uh, my parents had one that was all glass and you could see it was a percolator type and you would put the, put the grounds in and the water, you put it in like a little basket and then it would perk and it went to perked brown, you knew it was done. You boil it and it perked and once it, you know, came out, that's how you did your coffee. Um, not like today, I suppose, where I guess it perks, but it's more of a drip. Um, it brews, right? It brews. As the water goes through the grinds and yeah, so it's, there's perking and then there's brewing, I guess. Yeah, you always had it on the, on the stove for when you had company, um, always. And then you'd always have that box of enemins or whatever. Um, I remember my aunt, she would have donuts, but only once a week. She's super frugal. So if you went to visit her house um, on a Sunday or something, dad would take us over there. She would have donuts. And um, being, you know, kids, of course we wanted the donuts. She would cut them in half because she was a smart woman and she knew that kids' eyes are bigger than their uh, stomachs. But, of course, we thought, oh, why did she cut that in half? Now we have to ask for the other half if we finish it, that sort of thing. And I was the kind of kid that always finished the whole donut anyway. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, she was just a frugal person. And her kids, you know what? Her kids grew up to be nice, thin, um, you know, in shape people. And all of my sisters were, we're all chunky so that tells you something she was also very good at um keeping the halloween candy hidden and she would give you one piece of candy um at halloween you go and you'd get your halloween candy and then at the uh she'd bring it home at the end of the night she'd hide it and she'd give you one piece from your bag now um can you tell she was a home economics teacher and can you tell that's where i learned all of my uh crafty tricks from yep uh <laughs> so but she was she was quite a stitch and she was actually a seamstress and during the war she made um she made uniforms for the troops so uh so there's an example of how you could be of service to your country without actually going to war isn't that interesting and her husband by the way was also a um a marine so there you go okay so here's the top of this um it, it frozen i'm frozen uh oh 
Um, and so here's this piece that we talked about. So you notice that because it's circular, this part on here is bigger. So we're going to actually use it and put the bigger parts onto the inside here. Then we fold it so that this part is going to go inside of the, um, the coffee pot itself. So I like to do it this way. I don't know. I'm trying to remember how how uh how our friend did it but this is how I'm doing it okay I haven't been watching the screen on the comment so I apologize um I just get so into this that I just forget. So this is a bit tough, this piece, I will admit. This is the toughest part of this project because see what it's doing? It's creating like a lip here. It's really clever the way they designed it, but it is a little bit hard to visualize at first. And, um, and then, so it makes it a little bit hard. So that's why I wanna point it out to you. But you see, we're creating actually that coffee pot uh, top that's going to go on our base. So I'm almost done with this. And we're going to run over the time a little bit. While I'm doing this, I will mention that if you guys need anything uh, from Cricut, uh, this might be a good time to go have a look because they are having an access sale. So if you're an access subscriber, depending on which kind you are, if you're a premium sub subscriber on materials, you get 20% off all the time, right? But then when things are on sale, you get the sale price plus the 20% off. And if you use my link and code, until the end of June, you will get not 10, but 20% off. This does not apply to machines, but materials and tools and stuff. Just that stuff, but not machines. But believe it or not, you do get 10% off on machines if you are an Access uh, customer. All right, let me just... So if you need some, some stuff... I went and did my purchasing. I needed some more foil. So I went and picked up some foil and I was like, that wasn't on sale. The foil wasn't on sale. It was like $7.99. But then I got 20% off, which was cool. And uh, then I used my code and I got an additional 20% off on my code. You see what I'm doing here? I'm just sort of making sure that this is connected. I know I'm being a little bit uh, fussy about it, but it will pay off in the end. Okay. So while we let this set, just give it a second to set, right? Let's do the flowers. Super easy. And then we will attach both the top and the, the flowers. Okay, so the flowers are super easy. And as I mentioned, they're sort of an afterthought on this project. And so they're daisies. So here I'm just going to train them a little bit. And I can just first, at the very end, edge there, I'm just giving each base of the petals sort of like to make room for the stamen like that. And then you can do this with your um, scoring tool. This is a scraper and I do, I use that for making a lot of flowers. So there's two layers for each of these flowers. Bend and make sure you're holding it down the bottom because it will come off if you go too fast and then you have to cut them out again or try to try to save your flower. Listen, I've been there. I know how it goes, okay? So um, so there's our two flowers. And if you wanna ink, you can ink, 
Um, I don't generally do a lot of inking, but some people like to do that. So inking is where you would take your um, your pay, your ink pads and do the edges for a more realistic look. Um, which is it's great, but I am a terrible inker. Um, I I have a tendency to just over ink, and then it starts looking real messy and muddy. So I just stay away from it. <laughs> but so I'll leave that part to Leo, or to you guys if you want to do that. So it has also two pieces on the base, which you can use a pop dot for. This is a pop dot. It's just a foam piece with adhesive on either side. You peel off. Mine fits exactly on the back. And peel it like this. So there is our daisy, real cute. And here is the, um, the leaf part of it. So I just fold it to give it a little bit of uh, a little dimension. And then we're gonna glue it to the back of the flower. Just like that. We're gonna do that two times. All right. So the other thing I want to mention is we're coming to the end of our June giveaway, um, which is the bundle of joy. If you saw Dawn Walsh's uh, uh, unveiling, unboxing of her new joy that she won, which is really adorable. Um, and so she did a little unveiling because she was the winner for May. So I'd love to see... Um, some other when people win so this month june we're giving away every month actually we're giving away a joy with a bunch of extras um that include everything you need to get started with your joy and all you have to do is follow if you didn't if you haven't if you have followed all you need to do is comment share like all that stuff um that makes my channel get popular. I don't want to be too, too popular. <laughs> oh no, I couldn't possibly to be too popular. <laughs> but it does help me when you share and like and all that stuff because then there are all these goals. And most of them are non-monetary goals. They're just sort of, oh, speaking of goals, we did hit 14 thousand subscribers and I never made a mention of it but we did do that so that was pretty cool okay so for the flowers we're going to just put those there after we put the top on so to put the top on this is going to take a little finagling so see how this is how it goes on and just kind of give you a couple of views so see that it's like a lip all around so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure these are sort of sticking up like this and put some some glue on all of these pieces here yeah 14 huh at this rate, I'm hoping that we're hit 20 for Christmas. That was my original goal, um, 20,000 subscribers. Boy, it takes a lot to get subscribers on YouTube. So, okay, so here we go. So these are this is going to go in here. Now, you can't just, it would be great if you could just plop it on there, but you are going to have to reach up underneath and sort of hold those pieces to make sure they catch and that is what I'm doing here might have to go over it a couple times I might have to put some extra glue in there I don't know but I'm gonna try like heck now if you want to you could look in the inside here and you can see see that i got a couple that are attached and a couple that are not attached and i can either put the glue like reach down on the inside here and put the glue inside here like this sorry if my hand's in the way like that or um i could try to uh 
to sort of shimmy it in here on the edges. Sometimes that works. But this part here, I think, is the toughest part of this whole project. And, but it creates such a unique feature. I really like the whole, like, pot on the lid. And once you do it, you don't have to take this off, so you don't have to worry about that. So there you go. And then we take our our uh, daisies and we are going to put them here see there's the daisy stem and put it so that the leaves are facing upwards so it matches with that one flip it around I suppose I could put the base on um, and then you are done. There are all kinds of ways that you can make this your own, and that includes bling. Um, and let's see, it goes right on top here. And also something on the top. I have to get to Michael's to pick up my order, so I'm going to go poke around there and see what I can find to put on the top of my of my coffee pots. But isn't this just a darling little thing? Um, and you can make them look different, as different as you want. This one I wanted it to look really vintagey, and this one I wanted to give to my um, my friend who runs the community garden. And then I think for this dark one, I'm going to give it to my neighbors who are they were new during the pandemic, like at the beginning of the pandemic they moved in, and I always usually greet my neighbors with something. Uh, you know, and I didn't, I actually just yelled, they're, they're my neighbors right across the street, and I yelled over, I'm like, I'll bring something after the pandemic, <laughs> that sort of thing, and they said, that's great, you know, so I think I'll bring them this with something else, so, um, so that's what I think I'll do, I'll give them this one. That is it for today, this is the vintage coffee pot made entirely out of paper and a little bit of glue, and this is from Dreaming Tree 3D SVG, so go on over, I'll put the link in the description, I will also put the link to the giveaway in the description, um, and yeah, that's it for today. Tomorrow, I think we will be doing, what did I decide that we were going to do? Oh, we're going to use the smart cardstock to make stickers with our pens. We're going to make all kinds of little stickers and there's a ton of really awesome stickers. So we're going to do that tomorrow. So definitely join in. And then on Friday, we will be putting together the um, pop-up camper. Or it's really not a pop-up camper. It's a vintage camper from um, Lori Whitlock. It's a 3D and rather large. I'm going to cut it out a little bit smaller but the one I did was like enormous um and so I think I'll, I'll make it smaller and we're going to do that on Friday for 3D Friday and then we have a special um Saturday night plan for date night so definitely join us and if you can't join us come back on the YouTube channel and pick it up there and we love having you thank you so much definitely if you are in so inclined subscribe or like if you're already subscribed get your name in for the giveaway too all right everyone have a great day i hope you get some crafting in take care